Hello, everyone, and welcome to the World's Prediction Show. This is episode three, and boy, do we have some exciting stuff to talk to you. Uh, we're continuing to make the show go fast, so we're going to get straight into it with Cubby, Elias, and Croissant. And you can go back on previous episodes if you want to know who the fuck these people are. Okay, uh, this show is sponsored by Prize Picks, and in it we do some really cool stuff where we not only talk about the games that happened, the games that will happen, and uh, we talk, give some guesses on who's going to win, but we also make a couple prize picks lineups at the end of the show. And at the beginning of the show, we see how everybody did on their previous ones. So thank you to prize picks for sponsoring the show. We're going to talk more about them later, but in the short term, if you'd like to give them a try, you can use the link, and use code Travis. Anywho, uh, let's talk about today's matches. So first off, G2 lost to owner this morning. Uh, and then, <laughs> and no then, fucking kidding. And then we had uh, BLG two O PSG. So, raise your hand if you thought that T one was going to win this morning. Oh, and there he is, folks. The only person who was correct on that uh, between my three panelists. All right, Cubby. Why did why did T one win? Was it the reasons you thought they were going to win? Um. Honestly, yeah. Uh, I thought that G or like the one way to beat G two is to play through early game and beat him that way. And T one did. I thought that they played the lane assignments and the swaps really well. I also thought that there was a hard commit to the Ori Nocturne combo for G two. Yeah. I thought that G two was good when they were playing out three lanes and sides, but the Ori Nocturne combo it kind of took them a game and a half to figure out that they could one shot Ari, and that one shotting Ari was really key. I think that's showing the Nocturne early and just knowing that it was going to be Oriana following up. The Jin and the Ari plays each game from T1, they had a lot of range and they never really made themselves too vulnerable to the Nocturne Ori combo. So I thought the T1 managed it really well. And then Zeus was just stellar in both games. The Gragas was so good in game one. And this game two was a lot closer, but G2 couldn't break the base of T1 and the angles that Faker and Zeus had later on were too good. Yeah. This series felt like the one where I was like, oh, shit, Zeus is back, back. Yeah. Like, Faker, Faker also played better, um, uh, especially uh, in exactly what you were talking about, Cubby, those games where his job is Ari is to, like, be a fucking menace and don't get caught, for the love of God. Uh, and he was really, really good at it. I, I keep thinking about that top lane play where they threw everything in the kitchen sink, and he still survives just off of, like, little movements here and there. And I'm like, ah, shit. T1, the plot armor is crazy right now. Um, mm. No, they played really, really well. Uh, and uh, for me, the like, the most disappointing thing was I definitely thought like, oh yeah, Nocturne Ori is gonna be a thing, but it was genuinely everything. And like Cubby said, it took them one and a half games to figure out how they wanted to play it, which was like a bummer. Uh, maybe yeah. it's like nerves from Yike. Um, and. Uh, and I just, I really didn't expect Zeus to play that well. I thought he would, I thought it would be far more even, but he fucking slammed. His Gragas was so good. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Croissant, any, any takeaways? Is G2 the best Western team? Is that a thought after this? Obviously, they lost to one, but they looked okay doing it. Or <laughs> maybe they lost to the fourth seed LCK team. So maybe that's evidence that they suck. I don't know. I think all that we can say is that it's definitely close and G2 and Fly have had respectable showings in their own right um, and would really like to see TL step up tonight as well. Um, but I think uh, obviously Elias and I predicted G2 to win, but also just really like wanted them to win. And of yeah. course, like Hopium up on FlyQuest, uh, Hopium up on G2, but... Like, this is the way things go. But I, I do always like seeing T1 um, return to form and the return to form in terms of their, like, collective and then also their individuals we, we already talked about. Um, in the At some point in the show last time, I don't even remember when or what the context was, but I do remember saying, like, yeah, I, I want to see Faker play Ari. And seeing G2 so committed to Nocturne Oriana just made it, like, very, like, just kind of gave him a perfect series to showcase that his Ari would be a threat against or would make a lot of sense with Jin against the composition, like with the Vi Skarner um, stuff. And I think the one thing that also surprised me was um, 
uh, I mean, like, obviously we expected owner to have a good performance, but also I thought G2 looked a little bit off in terms of some of their... Like, they just kept playing into what T1 wanted to do, and mm -hmm. it's one thing to, um, like, not be able to start onto Jin because they're playing from, like, a very... G2 is playing from... Sorry, T1 was playing from an effective range, but it seemed very clear that T1 was just, like... I think they must have flanked G2, like, five or six times, like, in really, really big, like, decide, like game-deciding fashion across those two games, and it's, like... It was from the same angles each time. Um, obviously, good wards. Obviously, it's very difficult to suss it all out. But it didn't even look like G2 tried that hard. There was like two or three wards behind them in like every sequence. And so G T1 just conceded space. They're like, okay, we're going to TP behind them either with Faker or with Jax and, or Gragas over and over again. And then the Baron steal is obviously really frustrating, I'm sure, for a lot of fans sure. because it's like five people in the pit. They could have had Mickey out like just marking the buy, like Nautilus hook. It's anything. Um, so that's frustrating because if that didn't happen, then it would have been a lot harder for them to like. Th there's there's no easy. You're taking like thousands of damage from minions, Baron minions, as you're trying to like and flank them on the siege and all that stuff. But that just bought T1 all the time that they needed to close out the game or like swing it back in their favor. So uh, and yeah, they got souls in both games. So um, was surprised to see that. Uh, but yeah, I, I think. I, I really hope that G2 and FlyQuest don't actually face each other. I know people want like the guaranteed team to world or to, to quarters, but I would love to see the the one fourth of quarter finalists being Western teams kind of situation. So yeah. One thing before we move off that game that I noticed the most out of T1, and specifically when T1 are at their best, um, uh, it definitely felt like in G2 people were waiting for the shot caller to say something a lot of the time, especially in that Baron seal that feels like. It should be muscle memory, I think, for the support to move in a position to, like, we know where the way that they steal this game, that sort of thing. Not steal the game, but really tilt the game in their favor. Yeah. Um, and the thing that was most impressive for T1 for me was it felt like all the players were moving on their own um, and moving towards a cohesive game plan. And that's when T1 are at their most terrifying. When all five people seemingly, and obviously I don't listen to comms and don't speak Korean, but are seemingly all doing their own thing and understand what everybody wants from one another. Uh, and there was a lot of instances where, where I was like, oh, Kiri is on this uh, and owner's in the right position for that. And they understand when the play isn't working, so they're going to actually get the most they can out of it now that the play isn't working. And uh, it was really like, that was the starkest difference was G2 felt like they needed a specific shot calling thing to happen for them all to do the right thing. And T1 were kind of like all reading the map on their own and working together on it. Yeah. I, I like to add to that. I do think that like a lot of the meta we've talked about this a little bit. It's a lot of really like a lot of teams are taking mid jungle duos that I feel like are pretty stagnant, and then the rest of the meta is kind of um, like there's a lot of variance after that. Uh, in the Ori knock versus Vi Ari or Skarner Ari, like especially the second game, it really did feel like whichever team got to engage on their terms won. The yeah. one thing that I'll give T1 a lot of credit for is they got it early kill on owner. And then there was a sequence in mid game in that second game where they were able to snowball into every single lane. Like the Vi went and killed yeah. the Ori, went and killed the Nar. Uh, the Vi was just massive in that. And so I, I think that that really set up T1 well. T1 did throw the game with a couple of fights that I think they took too fast. But we did see like it was really whoever got to set up the fight in their terms was the one that won, uh, which I th thought was really interesting. And then also G2, they took a Baron when they should have taken a Mountain, because when T1 got Mountain Soul, they weren't able to break T1. Right. G2, like, their comp just cannot siege. They need to fight, so, so uh, I, that really hurt them, too. I, uh, I do want to move on to the next game. Yeah. Uh, we'll spend less time on it, I'm sure, but raise your hand if you thought BLG was going to win. Okay, so I guess really quickly, things went away the way that we all predicted, but... Are there any takeaways for PSG moving on to the next get match here? Did we think they were stronger or worse? Are they an opponent that everyone should be looking for? Are they actually going to be a lot more scary? Like, what are any thoughts on PSG after that match? Uh, Betty, I, uh, Betty's Ezreal has convinced me that if you're if you have an AD carry who is good at Ezreal. It is, you can find the matches where 
where it's good for the draft. Uh, whereas, like, previously I was kind of like, ooh, you got pushed to Ezreal. Like, there's no way this is going to work. Um, the fact that it was in that game for that long uh, was really interesting to me. And uh, it did make it difficult. Um, I do think PSG was eliminated. Oh, they're, they're gone, gone? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think okay. that was their third series loss. Oh, sure. Um, so, I don't know. The Maple made it sound like, if this goes well, I might do another year. <laughs> or if it doesn't go well, I'm following, finding it calling it quits. And oh, you, so... are, you are right. Sorry, I was mixing up the fact that we had our... our we've now tool. swapped into the second yeah. set of teams. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's fine. I, I was not 100% sure. I had to check. And then... Uh, but yeah, I, I had similar feeling as Elias. It's just like the last time Betty popped off against BLG and MSI, it was because he was also playing Ezreal in a tournament where I think it was might have been even less meta. And he had like some insane cues, like hit like four in a row in a Baron sequence. But um, yeah, PSG did better than I expected, to be honest. But uh, still, BLG. I also didn't expect BLG to play Jun, and I didn't see any discourse on like, or I, I don't know what was up whether they just want like you know the skin or what's going on but <laughs> um obviously uh I, yeah i've always liked both of those junglers that blg has running so it'll be interesting to see throughout the tournament if they um continue to well let me with that. let me invert this then uh because i misspoke obviously earlier blg are they i mean i think a lot of people thought they were going to be one of the scariest teams at this event like, are, do they continue to feel that way after this match? Because obviously they're fighting for their life, but uh, could have just been like an unfortunate draw. Uh, ben and Elk were, uh, they obviously like got some comfort picks that really, really made things work, but they were also playing very, very well. Uh, and uh, that's, that's Elk, part of the- Elk saved the series. Yeah. Elk was pretty incredible. Yeah. And uh, I have to be really careful. Like uh, I have, I feel like I have to r- remind nobody in particular, but just so the audience knows, I am not like a traditional analyst by any means. I've been watching for a long time and listened to analysts and worked with analysts for a while. Uh, and I have to be really careful with games like uh, um, Elk's MF game, where I'm like, oh, is MF a pick? And I was like, mm, it's it's probably just an Elk pick, and and then it's probably that the team could draft around in a really good way. But Elk played him at MF so well. It was so impressive to me. Yeah. All right, so let's recap people's lineup. So yesterday, the only winner we had was Elias, and he was a barely winner. Uh, he got a tiny a tiny technical win. So let's yeah. see how the, the crew did today. Uh, yesterday, I think we started with Cubby. So we'll start, Croissant. What was your lineup yesterday? So... I believe I had BLG as I I can't I could I could pull it up for you. See, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you had Thir- less than uh, 13. A- Aji, Junjia, and oh, yeah. Maple. At PSG less than thirteen point five. Less than thirteen and a half. I think they got thirteen. They got thirteen. Yeah. Okay. And then you had Faker the- and Guma. Less than 15 and a half I don't, on the first two kills. I don't know kills. what I was thinking for this one. I think it, <laughs> I had them as less than 12 and a half or something like that, but they cleared that one in like the first game or something. Like that. Yeah. And, and it's just like, I, huh? Sorry. You, you thought G2 were going to play three lanes. That's what you thought. Yeah, I, I was yeah, thinking that, by the way. Yeah. I, uh, I think one of you guys talked about the three lane thing. I, mm-hmm. I don't remember actually going that much into the component parts of it, but it's like, I think. I did expect G2 to make the, like, at least give a fight in the series. Um, but even if it was, like, Elias and I think both predicted 2 1, I don't know what I'm thinking. Cause, like, the conclusion should be that, like, there's never going to be a game where Guma and Faker get, like, completely shut out. It's going to be, like, a lot of kills to both Caps and Hans and all four of those primary carries. And then, so it's just like, yeah, could have, uh, could have, would have, should have. Just all right, I so you lost arriving at the wrong conclusions. <laughs> all right. Next up is Elias. Elias, what got, was your light up? My lineup was uh Broken Blade uh 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 falling over five uh and then away uh getting less than five point five and my lineup was refunded because <laughs> Way <laughs> didn't play and BB was right on the line. Yep. Uh so I'll let Travis 
uh, you do not judge of all. Yeah, yeah. You don't get a win or a loss. You get no trophy, cool. no thumbs down. You just it's in the same way that they refunded you. You are getting refunded on your play on the show. Sounds good. I, yeah. As long as I'm not losing people money, I'm happy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good. All right. Next up, <laughs> we have Cubby. Cubby. Funny. Are you on the board yet? What was your pick? Nope. Light up. Thanks, Travis. I appreciate that. Not on the board yet. I had <laughs> Junjia less than four, which uh, we all agreed was a lock. The true lock was yeah. way. I remember yesterday, Elias was like, um, man, like, why did I take way under five and a half? I should have taken Junjia under four or less than four, right? And then way doesn't play. And Junjia has like, what? A six, three kill Sejuani games. game. Yeah. And then it was so funny. Loss. It was brutal. So uh, that missed. And that's why I lost my leg uh, or the lost my lineup. The square that did hit was a night over 11 kills as the Jace game definitely helped with that. So, yeah. All right. So, so far, you all have played six lineups. One of them has barely hit. So let's see if we could do better <laughs> today because things are not trading well. This Travis. is a good lesson for everyone uh, that prize picks is something you play for fun, not because you <laughs> expect Travis, to Travis. come out on top. What's up, Croissant? We're, we're, we're competing against ourselves, not against, like, you know, the... I, you know, perfection, right? Don't let yes, perfect be the true. enemy of good. I did better on my second lineups than I did on my there first. There we go. Okay, you're that's progressing. We're, we're well, chat, chat, what was your lineup yesterday? Does any, was anybody here that remembers? I'm guessing not. So I will tell you all. Chat, oh, you, right. you had a lineup. Yours was owner getting less than five and a half kills. Owner got nine kills. You said that Betty would get more than five kills, which, to your credit, uh, everybody in uh, on the line on the call were like, "Oh, that's a terrible square." Betty got eleven kills. Yeah, did more than twice what you all expected. So good job, chat. Maple, you all said would get less than five and a half, or would get more than five and a half kills. Maple got three. So yeah. unfortunately, y'all lost. You only hit one. So chat. Do better next time. All right, let's move on to. Oh, thank you, Evil Trenton, for the uh, for the sub. Let's move on to tomorrow's matches. I keep saying tonight, but I guess it's tomorrow. Whatever. So mm -hmm. our first matchup is Fnatic and Weibo. So I've put a poll into Twitch chat, uh, but I will also ask everybody on the call who is going to win. So Cubby, who wins, Fnatic or Weibo, and why? Weibo 2-0 because Fnatic is not a good team. <laughs> All right, Elias, who wins, Weibo or Fnatic? It is it is Weibo because Fnatic are not a good team. All right, <laughs> and Croissant, who wins, Fnatic or Weibo, and why? I mean, I'm going to go Weibo 2-1 um, because both of them have glaring errors that really no one else at the tournament shares. It's kind of random. Um, but they're both pretty dynamic, so I expect like, you know, it's it's do or die for both of them, right? Last, yes. last elimination. Yeah, so, the rest of the teams here are fighting for yeah. elimination. They've been cooking, and I expect both teams to come out with at least like one pretty solid comp that they're really confident with, and then just like, which one figures out the other ones first, or finds a way around the draft, so i um, hoping they trade blows. So. Yep. And then next up we have uh oh actually I should ask Cubby and Elias is it 2 0 for you guys or yeah, is it a 2 1? Okay. 2 0 for me. It's 2 0. Okay. So I'll go ahead and put the poll up, but we have Hometown Heroes Team Liquid fighting against the lovable underdogs Gam. Who do you think wins Croissant and why? Is up in the TL because scrims have been going well. Okay. <laughs> You're responding to, I think, the, the spawn video that was put out with uh, with Core. I think Jan tweeted it as well, but yeah, scrims have been yeah. going well. <laughs> All right. Elias, who wins? It's TL 2-0. If it wasn't already an emotional prediction, I also like... And this is really dangerous to do with NA teams, but they just haven't been playing. They haven't been the team we know them to be. And like, 
if I'm wrong here, I'm wrong here, but I genuinely just got to play uh, the coin flip game and assume it's been like tails a few times. Sorry, so you're saying TL will win? 2-0, yeah, sorry. Because they haven't been the team that we expect them to be? No, and and I think that's unlucky. <laughs> I think oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying like, like this is maybe a bad idea because they've not been living up to their potential. No, and, and to be fair, as far as like opponents go, Gam has not been performing either. Well, uh, they've, they've th- been I don't better. Think they've outperformed TL. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, th- not only the the main reason I'm indexing on it is I know TL can play better, and uh, even though it was a deeply offensive video, uh, how Spawn was just talking to his team captain, uh, but. Uh, I, I do think they know what the issue is, and I believe in their ability to lock it in. So, yeah. 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 All right. So, oh, and then uh, Cubby. How about you? Did, did I do this right? Cubby. Yeah. Who yeah. wins? TL Graham. Uh, I think the fans win because we get a bloody series and the NA team will prevail. Yeah. So, okay. here, here. 2 0 or 2 1? 2 0. 2 0. Okay. So, 2 0 is across the board, right? Mm-hmm. All right, so you all are aligned on tomorrow's matches, but I think it is time to talk about what lineups you all are building. So for those of you that are not familiar with prize picks, we've talked about it previously. They are a very cool way to engage with world's matches, all sports matches, sports matches as a whole. They are America's biggest uh, daily fantasy sports site, and you can sign up using my link. And if you do, uh, and you use code Travis when you sign up, your first play you make, win or lose, of five dollars or more, they will give you fifty dollars in credit uh, to play on a future one. So, kind of a cool thing that they do for folks who are watching and signing up. Actually, does really help out. So, if you feel like you can do this responsibly, again, only if you can do it responsibly, please give it a try. It's a fun way to do this, and it's also kind of fun to do with friends. So, I know that that's a big thing that uh, Elias, for instance, likes to do in a group chat of his is uh, see see who wins and who who loses. Uh, All right. Plug the, there's a channel in the Discord, too. Oh, yes, exactly. Yeah. If you are af- having questions about how it works or you're confused or you want advice or you have a lineup you want to run by people, check out the Prize Picks uh, channel on the TGI Discord. There's a ton of cool people over there that hang out and play and share different ideas on, on lineups and all that type of stuff. So, so far, Decimai, I think, has been doing pretty well. All right. So, who's going first this time? I think I've probably gone with Cubby and Croissant previously. Let's go with uh, Elias. Oh, and uh, fun little caveat for today. So, for most people, I think, should be able to find in their, on price picks, if you go, today's a great day to play, because they have a promotion that goes on for the next five and a half hours, if you're watching this uh, live, called the Flex on M Protected Play. And you, you, if you opt into the promo, which you need to do on the promotions tab, you can get win or get your cash back up to $20. You opt in and then you have to check and it's gotta be a flex play, which means that you're choosing to have three or more and you want, uh, I think most of them to hit, I think is the idea. It's all but one, if I believe correctly. Mm-hmm. Uh, then you can get your, if you, if you lose that flex play, you end up uh, getting your money back up to $20. So kind of a fun thing that they're doing, low risk if you already have some money on the platform. So. I just thought I would ask my contestants here to make a flex play in honor of the Flex Friday promo. So, Elias, what is your flex play? Uh, my flex play is as follows. It is uh, the Yawn had a square at 10.5. Um, and even in uh, losses, uh, Yawn's been playing pretty well, uh, I think. And uh, against a team whose bot lane I think is significantly worse, um, I think uh, Jan can like farm for sure. Um, so Jan more that, than 10.5? Yep. Okay. Uh, after that, uh, I I don't know if this was in the episode but or maybe it was a discussion afterwards, but Cubby and I were talking assists. Or, or Travis, I think you brought up assists. So I really interrogated that, and, and I wanted to challenge myself. I was like, okay, we're going to pick an assist. Uh, so I have uh, Crisp uh, with more than 24 assists. Ooh, okay. Uh, uh, I do think Fnatic will not stop going at uh, Weibo, and I think Crisp will be there for nearly every fight. Um, so I think I think Crisp can get there. 
Uh, and then the last one uh, that I have is the combo for the top side of Fnatic, uh, Oscarin, Razork, and a Humanoid. Um, this one was pretty difficult for me to narrow in on, uh, but uh, overall I did expect Oscarin and Razork to not be able to get off to any sort of early kind of lead, uh, which is I think kind of the only way that Fnatic will scoop up kills. Um, and I'm really hoping fin Humanoid doesn't have a game where he like scoops up four kills randomly because then uh, it can like math out to be really disadvantageous in a game two. But overall, uh, I'm taking that trio Oscar and Razor Humanoid uh, underneath 13.5. Gotcha. Okay. So that is the flex play for you. Uh, I'll, I'll follow up afterwards to make sure I get this written down for tomorrow. Okay. Next up, we have Cubby. Cubby, what is your flex play? All right, I am in a somewhat similar boat here. Uh, I also have I have a couple tickets going. I will select this one as the one that I am most confident in. It would be APA plus Yawn more than 22 kills. I, I don't know what the square is at now, but I got it at more than 22. Yep, more than 22. And then Core JJ at more than 22 assists. Yeah. I, just, I think that the GOM TL series, regardless of how it goes, is going to be bloody. I, I could see some of these squares hitting, regardless if teams win or lose. Mm -hmm. uh, my favorite, one of my other squares that I have in a couple lineups, it is not in this one, but it is Kiaya, more than four and a half kills, as he has yeah. been playing a lot of carries. I do think that if I'm TL, though, I'm going to deny Rumble and Aurora going into the series, so I'm curious if that comes to fruition. But for my official one, for the prize picks Travis stream, it is light more than ten and a half kills in two maps. Uh, I just think that both series tomorrow are going to be very bloody, and Teams are going to... It, it's going to be a lot of kills tomorrow, is my gut feeling. Weibo's been playing really sloppy, and they're only playing uh, two-lane setups. Like, four yeah. So, Weibo... I, I, I really expect a lot of the Weibo squares to hit more. Mm -hmm. Feel free to interrogate each other, too. I don't know if any of you have any... Do you, um, do you like or dislike this this lineup? Uh, I The one that I dislike or scared myself off of uh, was the Core JJ one. Um, yep. Only because... Uh, I have this sort of fantasy that TL will go to that lane swap version of them where they do get kills, don't get me wrong, and Core JJ is everywhere and around the map, but like all of a sudden everything's choked out. Mm. Um now, is that likely to happen versus Gam? I'm now like sort of leaning towards like, nah, it's probably gonna be a really fucking bloody series. Um, but I got scared off of the Core JJ one. Uh, the light one was one I probably would have scooped up. Um, like I said, I, I kind of wanted to index on the find an assist line that I or square that I really liked. Um, so yeah, uh, and the Kiaya one is good. I didn't think about that at all, but I think that's a that's a pretty damn good one. Yep. Cool. Okay, so finally, uh, Cubby, you have APA and Yan at more than twenty two kills. You have Core JJ at more than twenty two assists. Big on the twenty two mm -hmm. apparently. And light at more than ten and a half for your flex play. All right, cool. Croissant, what have you cooked up for us? So I am no longer doing combos as like an official <laughs> rule. And then I but I technically am just doing a split up combo. So I'm doing Yawn and APA as both above or more, but more than ten kills for APA, more than ten point five for Yawn. Um and I guess that's the like risk uh, of like it's 1.5 less than what it would be like together, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that. You're saying with the flex um, play, yeah? Or or with uh, the combo, it's oh yeah, there's a payout at, shift. Yeah, it's at, it's at 22 versus um, this is technically at 20.5, but you have to there can't be like a a split, right? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I see like what you're saying. One with um, so I, I expect combo both of them to be more. picking up. Yeah, I expect both of them to be picking up kills. I expect APA to be killing Levi, and expect Yon to be killing the support. Um, and then Razork, I have him at more than four because I am. Uh, okay. Yeah, I can see that. So yeah, yeah. Uh, he's. I mean, he he really waffles between the styles that he plays. So obviously, yeah. it matters a lot on what they draft. But I think if they are going to. Uh, have a um i can very much see Razork uh playing pretty well against tarzan for at least one of the games and then yeah because tarzan's been 
very, very inconsistent player um, now for like two tournaments in a row uh, and not really happy with his performance so far. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Cool. Uh, okay. So APA over 10, Jan over 10, Razork over four. Or te- sorry, Jan over 10 and a half, I should say. You were going to say something, Elise? I was just going to say, uh, I now need to start looking at Western players' tendencies now that they get to watch other people play. Because Razork, that Razork square is now more appetizing after seeing Owner have a very, very good game on Vi. And Razork sees themselves as a Vi player. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I could totally see one draft where they pick Vi. And at worst, three kills. Like, and that'll get you there. Yeah. I... I, again, I think it's going to be a bloody series. I like that because I feel like Fnatic, their only chance to win is to actually put Razork on carries. So, yep. uh, like, it has to be Razork Humanoid Show. So, yeah. Okay, so now we're going to do the crowd or the chat lineup. So, Croissant, give me a number between 1 and 21. 17. 17. Okay. Cubby, give me a number between 1 and 21. Uh, 6. 6. All right. Elias, give me a number between 1 and 21. That is not either of those other numbers. 10. 10. Okay. So here we go. This is our lineup. So our first number is 17, which is... Uh, which is, I believe, Umpty. All right, Twitch chat. We're going to do oh, a flex play. Uh, I, I want you all to tell me so if Umpty is going to get more or less than four kills in the first two games. We're going to use this to build our lineup. So while we're letting giving Twitch chat that one minute, you can use bit, bits or not bits, channel points or whatever. While we're giving uh, them that time, Cubby, what is your case for Umpty getting more or less? Uh, let me pull up the match history so far for Worlds. Um, I, he's averaging two kills a game so far. Yeah, it's like so. This is brutal, and it's yeah. been Skarner, Sedge, Vi, Skarner. Um, I would. I, I'm just gonna say more because I just think that this series goes more. I, I I know that TL plays pretty clean, but I feel like a lot of the drafts that we have at the moment and the way that TL is playing, like both teams are playing for two lanes. Kiai is playing a lot of top carries. I just think that it leads to be a more volatile series. So I, I'm just going to go more for Umti and say that uh, I think A, TL is going to win and B, Umti is more likely to play a carry in, in this, uh, just with how the meta is shifting. All right. So we're in. Uh, guess what? Chat agrees with you. So we're in at more for Umti. Rare. rare. What? It's, I said Rare. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 that they agree. All right, next yeah. up, we have the combo, and our combo is APA and Yan at 22. Now, right. we already had one of you put this in, but we're going to see if Twitch chat agrees. So, APA, Yan, more, less, at 22. All right, so chat, you go for, let us know about more or less for APA, Yan at 22. I think, Elias, this was not yours, right? Or was Correct. it? Correct. I didn't take this one. Okay. So we've heard, I know that, that Croissant kind of did this version in like the kills. Cubby right. was the less, one who put less, it in. Less, 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 less. So which would you say it's going to be, Elias? No, no, I take the more on it. The more uh, that Cubby makes the point that it's going to be a bloody series, the more I'm like, yeah, there's going to be like a Nico game. It's just how Gom plays. True. Yeah. And, and I, I'm so interested, and it will influence like how I play the squares moving forward, how APA looks this series, um, and like what champions stand out as like these are the APA champions for this tournament, because um, it hasn't been Nico yet. Uh, admittedly, it hasn't been Nico because of like pixels. Um, so I would very much play the more on this one. Uh, if I was forced to pick the square. Because Jan's been great, and if APA finds his footing, it, they can absolutely clear this. Well, Chad agrees with you. They're at 92% more versus less at 8%. Phil Jan put in 1,400 channel points. So Hell yeah. we have our final uh, square, which is uh, 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 Razork. So this is kind of funny because we already had oh, somebody put sure. in Razork as well. But... 
Let's see what chat thinks. Razork at four, more or less. Uh, so I think, Croissant, you were the one that actually did play this, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I did. Okay, I so did. Cubby, you think Razork more or less than four? More. I, more? I really like Sans Logic for that, actually. Okay. Yeah. So we'll see how chat is- agrees, but chat right now is, uh, it's, everybody's in on more. I'm curious see, if chat- anyone will force it in the other direction. You get to wake up in the morning and just root for blood. That's, yep. that, what, what's better than that? And uh, that's actually one aspect of playing prize picks that we haven't talked about a lot, is that there are, especially with my group chat, there are squares that we play simply because, like, this would be more fun, and, like, screaming for more kills is more fun. Like, just mm-hmm. flat out. Um, uh, I don't, I play because I want more investment in games. And Fnatic is one of those teams that I don't have an emotional connection to. So if I'm watching, I'm like, okay, I want to like feel something for this underdog. I think that's a really <laughs> fun approach. This this is a trio if it lands on more for Razork. It did that yeah. I would play because it's very fun. Okay, yeah. um, Umpty at more than four kills, AP and Yan at more than twenty two kills. So like, you have to really hope that we're gonna get a lot of blood. kills if we're if we're guaranteeing at least twenty six kills on Team Liquid in the. <laughs> in the those first two games and then Razork at more than four so that is the chat uh the chat's yeah. decision there we'll see how it goes but uh we're excited about it yeah thank you chat for that you lost yesterday chat let's see if you can win today all right that is the show we will be back tomorrow to see how everyone does but thank you to cubby elias and croissant for uh doing this let's see if any of them can get on the board versus besides elias's one measly teensy (laughs) little one and uh, we'll see you tomorrow to check in on how everyone's plays went see ya go Dodgers